Okay, this is a video on the Dust Bowl. The Great Depression has two major parts. It is an environmental disaster, uh, like we've never seen in the country, of drought, partly caused by people, mainly nature, and also a total economic collapse. So this is kind of a perfect storm of natural and man-made courses, and today I'm gonna to talk about the Dust Bowl. First of all, this is the Southern Plains, very connected with Texas. The north third of Texas had never been inhabited, even by Comanche and other Indian tribes. They had hunted there, but never really lived there. Ranchers went out after the Indians and bison were wiped out. They made a living, but again, used it mainly as grassland. And farmers, of course, start moving out there, and they find right away that ranchers are telling them, you don't live here, you can't farm this area. This is west of the 100th meridian, less than 25 inches of rain a year, sometimes a lot less. In the 1920s, those were wet years. In addition, the U.S. government had subsidized wheat production for World War I and also for Western Europe and was paying $2 a bushel for wheat. So farmers who had never made more than a bare scraping by living are now making, if you have a 300 acre farm and you can make 30 to 40 bushels of wheat per acre, you can make $6,000 on that farm. These are people who made an average of about $1,000 an acre before the Dust Bowl. So people are out there, oh my gosh, look at this money. If I borrow money from the bank, get a bigger tractor, buy more acres, I may make $10,000 or $15,000 next year. So part of the factor here, like the crash of the stock market, is just greed. We can make more money. The upshot was in the 1920s, 11 million acres are plowed up, most of it on the southern plains to grow wheat. What happens when you have overproduction? The price falls. A dollar a bushel instead of two dollars a bushel, and it kept falling after that. But the solution that they saw was, well, I need to plant more next year. And of course, the price keeps spiraling down. In addition, you have a weird theory at the time. This is why we need science. But the theory was rain follows the plow, that if you planted crops and trees, that rain would be attracted to them like a magnet. And this is a farmer talking. This is a quote, God never wanted any part of the earth to be a permanent desert. If man would farm the land, God would provide the rain. So worked out in the 1920s, but in the 1930s, the rain stops. First of all, the stock market collapse is the fall of 29. In the spring of 1930, you begin a 10-year drought. Not a one-year drought, but a 10-year drought. And if you remember the drought that we had in 2011, where we had no rain for three months and a very low rainfall for the year, this is, in a way, worse than that. Average rain in North Texas averages about 20 inches. In the 1920s, it was 12 inches or less. You can grow literally nothing. In some years, six or eight inches. In addition, you had massive heat waves. Air temperature would reach 118 degrees. One farmer took a thermometer out to his fields, held it at ground level where the crops were, and recorded a temperature of 142 degrees Fahrenheit. Literally, the heat was cooking the crops. Nothing could grow with or without rain. What happens, of course, is people, animals die of heat stroke. There's not a lot of trees on the Great Plains either. Almost 5,000 people died of heat stroke and heat causes in 1936 alone in one year. No air conditioning until the 1950s. So there's no way to get out of it. And as the movie shows, on top of this all in the 1930s, you had plagues of rabbits and in a different year, grasshoppers, locusts. So these people literally thought God was cursing them. They must have done something terrible. Like the Old Testament, the locusts, the rabbits, the drought, what else can you have that can hit us? Because nothing grew, and of course it's always windy on the Great Plains, uh, average wind speed is anything from 15 to 50 miles an hour. If you've ever driven through North Texas, you know what I'm talking about. Winds continue, they didn't stop, but now there was no vegetation holding the earth down. Used to have prairie grasses after that in the 1920s you did have crops and that kept the dirt down now there was no vegetation the dirt was loose on the soil the wind kept blowing 12 months a year and you ended up with what they called black blizzards 
These were dust storms. The wind would pick up the loose dust and swirl it. And some of these dust storms, 10 miles tall, 250 miles wide, no place to get away from it. There was nowhere to go. You couldn't outrun the dust. You could see it coming and it was coming fast, sometimes 30, 40 miles an hour. You grabbed your kids and you ran into the house and you tried to barricade yourself there and keep out as much of the dust as possible. Your kid didn't get in the house at time, he probably was gonna die. Um, they recorded dust from the Great Plains out in the Atlantic Ocean over 300 miles from land. So this dust traveled for miles and miles across the rest of the country. The sky would change color and people knew Oklahoma's having a dust storm again. Some of these storms lasted 24 hours. In 1933, over 70 hours of dust storms, some of them consecutive days of dust storms. Amarillo, North Texas, close to 1,000 hours of dust storms in 1937. As the 1930s go on, the storms get worse and worse and increase. The dust, you can't imagine what this is unless you have lived in a northern state and been in a really serious blizzard. You literally cannot see your hand in front of your face. And this was the same thing, only it was black. In the winter, it became black snow because the wind didn't stop and the dust was still loose in the winter. The sun disappeared. It looked like a total eclipse. It looked like midnight outside. And people got lost and died out there. Um, one storm was recorded as dropping three inches of dust. Just a single storm. So, effects of the Dust Bowl, just the Dust Bowl without the economic collapse. First of all, the High Plains today, North Texas looks very different than it did, for example, when the Spaniards first went across. They recorded prairie grasses up to the tops of their stirrups. That, you don't find that in North Texas anymore. Why? There's no topsoil. It takes a thousand years to make an inch of topsoil on the Great Plains. We lost millions and millions and billions of tons of topsoil. They estimate 500 tons of topsoil per acre. So billions of tons of topsoil. When will it recover? Not in our lifetime, not for hundreds of thousands of years. Much more barren. The dust, the accumulation of dust would crush buildings. They would collapse under the weight. It toppled telephone poles. Trains couldn't run because there were dust piles across the tracks. Uh, you couldn't keep it out of your house no matter how hard you tried because it's very fine clayey dust. What happens to the crops? There are no crops. First of all, there is a drought with no rain, plus the dust storm. So wheels, if you had any crops, went from 40 bushels an acre down to 4 bushels an acre. Price went down to less than 20 cents a bushel, and it kept dropping. It cost more to plant the fields than anything you were going to get to sell on them. Livestock. People who had spent their entire careers building up a herd of cattle, it was gone. They suffocated, their lungs were full of dirt, there was nothing to eat anyway. Farmers didn't know what to do. In the hill country here, I know old ranchers who burned the prickles, the, the thorns off a prickly pear and would feed that to their cattle just to get them to survive. Government later stepped in and bought dead and dying cattle and at least gave the ranchers something to stabilize the price. But most millions and millions of calves, cows, were slaughtered. They bulldozed big holes, herded them in, executed them all, and buried them because they were going to die anyway. For people, dust pneumonia was the term. Uh, today we call it silicosis. They call it dust pneumonia. This very fine dust filled their lungs. Uh, fill their digestive system. You couldn't cough enough to get rid of it. Unlike COVID virus, which doesn't seem to be too deadly to kids, the dust pneumonia hit the kids and, of course, the elderly. People were coughing up mud. And the accumulated effects over two, three years, your lungs got worse and worse. Most of the survivors who lived through it had lung ailments the rest of their lives. Great story that I'll end with of a doctor in western Oklahoma, healthy young guy comes in, young farmhand, he's coughing, he's coughing, doctor, what is wrong with me? I can't stop this coughing. Doctor examines him and says, young man, you are full of dirt. The guy died the next day. And that's a healthy young man. So you can imagine the effect on other people. 
Okay, my next video, I will try and move into the Great Depression and the effects on society and Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt. So let's see how it goes. We're doing the best we can. Thanks.